What's up guys, it's Danta. So last year I made a Dota 2 beginner's guide video. But since Dota 2 had a major update, which revamped the entire map a while ago, I figured like, let's just make a new or well, updated guide video for those that want to try out the game. Now I hear a lot of people say that Dota 2 is too hard to get into. I've played Heroes of the Storm, League of Legends, Smite, and even Pokemon Unite. And yes, Dota is a bit more complicated. But when you get to know the basics of the game, it becomes really easy to understand how it works. So what I will do is I'll try to go over all the necessary things that you need to know and try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, since we don't want to make the video too long, let's just get into it. All right, so whenever you launch the game, you can choose between a couple of game modes. Now, I tried to make a new Steam account so I could see if you guys have to deal with some kind of tutorial first, but Steam didn't let me make a new account. It was giving me errors on the I am not a robot part, so uh, I wasn't able to check it out. Now, as for the game modes, we have custom lobbies, bot matches, ranked matches, unranked matches, and a new player mode. Now, I mostly play Turbo, and the main reason for that is because I have over 3000 hours in the game, but I've spent 2000 hours of those just playing normal matches. And they were great, don't get me wrong, but these matches can last a damn long time. And whenever someone, or sometimes even the entire team, decides to throw the game after 40 minutes, you will end up ripping your hair out of your head. It sucks so much. So, that's why I've been playing Turbo ever since it came out. The matches are faster and it allows for some crazy builds because you get more gold and also more XP. Now, for a new player, I would recommend to just focus on all pick or on bot matches. At least until you get used to the basics. Now there's also a new player mode, but I feel like regular bot matches on easy will just help you out a lot more. Now if you really want to try out turbo, then of course you can do that. But it can be a little bit overwhelming if you don't know the basics. But some people learn faster whenever they are thrown in the fire or however the hell that saying goes. <laughs> Now, with that said, let's just get into the options and key bindings. So, I started a private match just to show you guys what I'm doing, because it can be very overwhelming, especially for a new player. Now, since I don't want you guys to go bald yet, I'll try to keep it as simple as I can for you, by just covering the basics that I think a new player has to know whenever it comes to Dota 2. So, let's start with the camera movement. Now, for those that don't know, basically in every other MOBA, the way you move your camera is by dragging your cursor across the screen. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like this. I really hate it, and I can't even play this game decently if I have to move my camera like this. Maybe I'm stupid, I have no idea, but I just can't. Now, if you are like me and you don't like the movement this way, then, well, you can actually change it. So the way to change this is by going over towards the settings tab, which is located on the top left corner of your screen. You click on it, you go to the advanced hotkey section, and over here you will see the camera actions tab. Now over here you can rebind your camera settings. Now I like having it set to WSAD. It's basically the only way that I'm able to play any MOBA actually decently. So um, yeah, over here you can change those settings. Now there are actually people that get triggered whenever you say that you have rebinded your camera options. And um, if you are one of those people that get triggered by this, then all I can say to you is go suck a big fat donkey. <coughs> Next up, we have the abilities. So most heroes have four abilities. There are some that have five and there are also some that have six abilities. Now, let's say you want to rebind those buttons. Then all you got to do is go back to the settings tab, which was located on the top left corner of your screen. You click on it and you will immediately see the abilities tab. Now over here you can basically keybind anything to these buttons. Even your mouse buttons will work. Yeah, that's actually all there is to keybinding your abilities. Now as you can see there's also an items tab. Now the way Dota works is that you have to buy items to make your character stronger throughout the match. And basically whenever you buy an item and it has an on use effect, you can trigger that use by using the specific keybind that you have set up over here. So for example, I have a Manta style over here. I keybinded it to space. What it does is whenever I press space, it triggers that item. That's all there is to it. 
Now, something else you might want to take a look at is the enable quick cast option. Basically what it does whenever it is disabled, it makes it so that you can target wherever you want to use your abilities at. But if you enable it, it will make it so that whenever you press an ability, it will immediately be used at where your mouse is pointing at. So you don't have to target anything. Now, some people like it, some people don't. So it's completely up to you if you want to use that or not. So whenever it comes to the first tab, there's just one more thing that you need to keybind, and that's the attack move slash force attack. Now, I've keybinded it to R, you can keybind it to whatever you like, but basically what it does is that it allows you to deny creeps. And what I mean by that is that you can kill your own creeps. Now, I will talk about that later on in the video more, but it's a really important button to keybind. <laughs> okay, so I thought we were finally done here, but um, there's just one more thing. <laughs> um, there's something called next unit underneath control groups and I have keybinded it to tab you can keybind it to whatever the hell you want basically what this does is that whenever you have a hero that can summon minions or control jungle creeps then all you gotta do is press tab and you will cycle through all the summoned minions that you have would I suggest a new player to play a hero like that? no <laughs> I wouldn't but hey there are some crazy people out there Next up we have the advanced hotkey section. So um, over here you will see a lot of stuff. But don't worry, since this is a beginner's guide, um, I won't be going over all the unnecessary stuff. There are just two things that I will go over. The first thing is called the camera actions. Now, right here you can basically just set up the way that you want your camera to move. So I use WSAD like I mentioned before. But if you like to set it up with your mouse buttons, you can do that as well. You can basically keybind anything you want over here. The most important thing is that you set up your camera movement the way you like it. Because if you don't, you will have a bad time playing the game. Now, the last part that we are going to take a look at over here is the hotkey options part. So um, there are three things that I've enabled. Basically, what this does is that if you have a character that can buff itself, then all you got to do is just double tap that ability and it will immediately buff yourself. It will make it so that you don't have to click on yourself in the middle of a team fight. So that's a nice option to have whenever it comes to team fights. All right. So as for the options window, um, well, as you can see, there are a lot of things that you can mess around with, but I'll just stick to the most important things to keep this video as simple as possible for you guys. So the first thing is the auto attack option. Um, I have it set to standard and basically what it does is that whenever you are attacking a creep and you actually kill it, it will immediately start attacking something else. Now, if you set this to never, then whenever you kill a creep, it will just make it so that your character is going to stand still and not do anything else. As for the double tap ability to self cast, we've already talked about that. It basically makes it so that whenever you double tap an ability or an item, it will cast it on yourself. Then we have the teleport requires hold slash stop. Now, whenever you have this disabled um, and you are going to teleport to a tower, but accidentally click on the ground, it will cancel your teleport. Now in Dota, whenever your teleport gets interrupted, it will go on a cooldown, so it kind of sucks. But if you enable this and you are going to teleport to a tower, but accidentally click on the ground, nothing will happen and the teleport will still go through. As for the minimap, um, these are the options that I like to have enabled. I don't like to have simple colors on. I don't like to hide my minimap background. I have no idea why someone would hide it. It makes no sense to me. <laughs> Then we have the use simple minimap background. I like having this enabled because it's just less chaotic. If you want to have a larger minimap, all you got to do is just enable the extra large minimap option. Then we have something called use alt to show hero icons. Now, in my opinion, this is probably the most important thing in the entire options window. What this does is that whenever you press alt, you will see the hero portraits instead of just a green arrow or a pink arrow. Now, if you want to have your minimap on the right, you can also do that by enabling this option over here. Or if you want to have it on the left, just disable it. Then there's just one more thing that I want to talk about. And after that, we are finally done with the key bindings and options. It's called holding alt shows tower attack range. Now, if you are near a tower and you are wondering if you are within attack range, all you got to do is press alt and you will see a big circle around the tower. Now, if you are within that circle, then the tower is able to attack you. If you are not, then you are safe. So yeah, guys, that's finally it for the options and key bindings. 
So next up we have the items and how to select a character guide. So those that have been playing Smite or League probably already know that you have to buy items to make your character stronger throughout the match. But if you have never played a MOBA before and you are going to start with Dota 2, well, the moment you open up the store page, you will see a lot of items and most people will be overwhelmed by it, which is completely understandable. But Dota has a guide system and it's it's great for new players, it really is. So I highly recommend using it. Basically what it means is that whenever you go to the store page, which you can do by clicking on this yellow button, you can click on browse all guides, which is up here. Now, if you don't see it, you can just click on these two arrows, I think, and you should see it. Now, whenever you click on browse all guides, you will see a lot of guides that a lot of people have made. Now, as a new player, I would recommend for you to stick to the guides with the highest percentage number because that means that a lot of people have liked that guide. Now, there's just one thing uh, that I want to say here. Uh, some guides have a high percentage number, but they are actually in Russian or Ukraine. I don't speak those languages. I can't understand what it says. If you don't either, then just find a guide that's in English, even if it's not the highest percentage number. Because as a new player, you have no idea what these items do. Whenever you finally start understanding what some of these items do, you can pick whatever guide you want. But as a new player, I would stick to English guides if you don't speak Russian or Ukraine. Whenever you select a guide, um, I'll just reselect it. So I select this guide and as you can see, it immediately updates the item list over here in the store page. Basically what you want to do as a new player is just buy the items that the guide is telling you to buy. And that's why the guide system in Dota 2 is, in my opinion, awesome, <laughs> especially for new players, because it now tells you what you should buy, even though you have no clue what these items do. The guide system doesn't only tell you which items you should buy, it also tells you which ability you should level first. Now, whenever you finally start to understand the hero that you're playing, um, you don't have to follow the guide anymore, right? Because for example, this hero has a slow, right? And the guide told me not to pick that one first. But there might be situations where you want to pick the slow first. For example, if you want to gank with your team in the first couple of minutes, then it's way better to have the slow first instead of the spider web. So one thing that I would suggest you do, especially as a new player, is just go into a bot match and open up the store and mess around with it. Now there is a lot I can talk about whenever it comes to all the things that you can find on the map. But to keep it as simple as possible, I'll just go over the most important things that you need to know. Now each team has an ancient, which is this big building located over here and here. Now the main objective in Dota 2 is to destroy the enemy's ancient. It's that simple. Even though it's that simple, it can still be a long and tedious journey, especially if you have some, um, well, special teammates. Then we also have buildings called barracks. Um, there are two located on each lane. So we have two barracks on the mid lane, two barracks on the top lane, and two barracks on the bottom lane. Now basically what these barracks do is they spawn your creeps, which are these little minions. Now they might look different on your screen because I have a skin for them. Now basically what these creeps do is they try to help you destroy the enemy's ancient. Now whenever your barracks get destroyed, your creeps will still keep spawning but they will be a lot weaker than the enemy's creeps. So next up we have the towers. Now again, they will probably look a little bit different than mine because I have a skin for those as well. But there are three towers on each lane and they basically work the same as in Heroes of the Storm, Smite and the League. They defend your base. Now what separates these towers from the other MOBAs is that they don't target your hero immediately. They actually focus creeps way more than heroes. This is one of the reasons why I like Dota a lot more than the rest of the MOBAs that I've played because it means that you can dive a lot more and be very aggressive which is a playstyle that I personally like a lot. Now there is also a way to force the tower to attack your creeps instead of you but I'll get to that later. That's pretty much it for the buildings that we have. Now before I go over the rest of the things that you can find on the map I will give you a quick example on how to win a match. So the first thing you will do is try to destroy the first tower then the second one and eventually the tower guarding the barracks. After that, you can destroy the barracks and focus on the two towers guarding the Ancient. Now, whenever these two towers get destroyed, you can destroy the Ancient and you win. But just so you know, you can't attack the barracks if the tier three tower is still up. And the same thing comes for the Ancient. You first have to destroy these two towers guarding the Ancient before you can even attack the Ancient. So just keep that in mind. Something else that you will find on the map are these things called Tormentors. There are two on the map. You will have one over here and you will also have one over here. 
Now they will spawn after 20 minutes and both grant you a Aghanim shard after you destroy it. Now just be careful because these tormentors have a big ass shield and they will reflect all the damage back at you so you can actually die whenever you try to destroy it. Near these tormentors you will find wisdom runes. Now basically what these wisdom runes do is they grant you XP whenever you pick them up. That's all they do. Then we have those things called watchers. Um, basically what they do is that whenever you click on them, they will grant you vision for around 7 minutes. Now when a team kills Roshan, all of those watchers will turn to their side. So now you are probably like, well who the hell is Roshan or what is a Roshan? Well, Roshan is basically a boss that you can kill. There are two Roshan pits located on the map and he will be chilling in one of those pits. When Roshan gets killed, he will drop a couple of items, but the most important one is the Ages of Immortality. With this item, you'll be able to come back to life once, so it's a great item to have in teamfights. Close to these Roshan pits, you will find gates, or portals, and they basically allow you to quickly go from the top lane to the bottom lane, and vice versa, but you can also use them to quickly check where Roshan is located. So basically all you have to do is click on them, and they will just teleport you across the map. That's all they do. There are two lotus pools located on the map. Whenever you click on them, you will get a piece of fruit if there is any left in stock. Now whenever you consume the fruit, it will give you some HP and some mana. That's it. Another thing that you will find on the map are these outposts. In short, they are just there to be teleported to. That's actually all it is. Each team starts with two outposts. Now I'm not completely sure about which tier tower you have to destroy, but um, the moment you destroy one tier 2 or one tier 3 tower, you will be able to capture the enemy's outposts as well. So this is a nice way of providing your team with more places to teleport to. So there is something that I almost forgot, and that's the secret shot. Now I usually just play turbo, so I don't have to deal with this, but if you are going to play normal matches, you will have to buy certain pieces of gear at a secret shop. If you want to know which pieces of gear you have to buy at the secret shop, all you gotta look for is this tent icon. Now to see where these secret shops are located, all you have to do is look up the tent icon on your map. So we have one secret shop over here. And we have one located over here. Next up we have these runes. And they basically give you gold. Or sometimes give you double damage, haste, a shield or even health and mana regen. You have multiple spawn locations for these runes. You have one in your jungle, one in the enemy's jungle. And there are two spawn locations in the river. Now at the start of the match, every location will spawn a bounty rune. And bounty runes are basically runes that give you some money. That's actually it. <laughs> so what most people do at the beginning of the match is they rush over to these rune locations and fight for them. Because they can give you a head start whenever you want to buy some early game items. On the map you will also find jungle camps, which are marked by these triangles. The more stuff underneath the triangle, the harder the jungle camp is. So for example, if you have a camp that has a triangle and two bars underneath it, it will be harder than a jungle camp with just a triangle. There are also two very hard camps filled with ancients, but I would avoid those at the start of the match if I were you, because you will probably die if you are going to attack those at level 1. So if you are going to play a hero that can jungle, um, then I would just focus on the weakest camps first, which are these camps marked by just a triangle and nothing more underneath it. Just keep farming these jungles until you get stronger and get better items, then you can move on to harder camps. Now by killing jungle creeps, you will eventually see a token drop, and when you pick it up and click on it, you will be able to choose from a selection of neutral items. Neutral items can, for example, give you stats, protect you from damage, and some of these neutral items even have an unused effect, so make sure you keybind them as well. Placing wards grants vision on the map, so the way it works is you buy an observer ward, which is a yellow ward, and you will be able to place it wherever you want. Now whenever you place down the ward, it will grant you vision. If you have no idea where to place them, you can always place them on top of one of those warding spots. Now there are two types of wards. You have observer wards, the ones that grant vision, and you have sentry wards, the ones that let you see invisible heroes, but also wards that enemies have placed. Let's say an enemy placed a ward over here. All you have to do to remove their vision is by a sentry ward, which is mostly the support's job. What you want to do is place it next to their ward 
and then you will be able to see their ward and destroy it. So yeah, that's how warding and dewarding works in Dota 2. So the map in Dota 2 is divided in three lanes. We have the top lane, we have the mid lane, and we have the bottom lane. Um, by the way, if you want to know how to draw on the map, all you got to do is hold control and you will be able to draw anything on it. So as a new player, um, I would say go to either the top lane or the bottom lane. And the reason why is because if you are going to the mid lane, you will be all alone. And nine out of the 10 times, you will be hanging out on top or bottom with a second teammate, which makes it a lot easier. But if you really want to go to mid, then all I can say to you is try not to die a lot, because if you're going to feed the mid lane, oh boy, you and your teammates will not be having a lot of fun in that match anymore, that's for sure. So next up we have last hitting and denying. Now last hitting is one of the most important mechanics in Dota 2, because it's the number one way to earn gold in game. Now you are going to need a lot of gold to buy items that will make your character stronger. So the way it works is whenever a creep is low, all you gotta do is right click it. Here's the hardest part about last hitting. Um, every hero basically has a different animation and it also has different attack damage. So um, some heroes are easier to last hit with than others. Now if you are playing a support, don't start stealing the last hits from the carry because they will get mad and um, you might actually screw up the game, because if a carry is able to last hit a lot, then you will have a higher chance of winning the match actually. Now that's it for last hitting, but then we also have something that's called denying. And um, the way it works is that whenever you press the deny key, which was the one that we set up earlier in the video, it's the attack move slash force attack, which I have bound to R. So for example, whenever a creep gets low, all you gotta do is press R and then click on the creep and it will deny your creep. Now, whenever you deny a creep, it will give no XP to the enemy. And this means that if you are really good at denying, you will be able to outlevel the enemy, which means that you will have a huge advantage over them. Now, usually it's the support that denies the enemy, but if you are playing on mid, then there's no one else around. So you gotta deny and you gotta last it, which is also one of the reasons why mid is harder than bottom or top. As for how to get XP in this game, um, basically whenever a creep dies on the lane, everyone that's on that lane and nearby will get XP. So it's not like Heroes of the Storm, um, where you can just sit in the base and get XP from kills that other teammates made. You actually have to be near creeps to get XP um, or player kills. Now as a new player, I would highly suggest to just start a bot match and practice last hitting because like I mentioned before every hero has a different animation and it also has different attack damage than other heroes so there are actually heroes that it's easier with to last hit in the game all right so which hero should you play well one of the best things about dota and one of the things that makes it probably the best MOBA in my opinion that you can play is the fact that all the heroes are free. You don't have to buy anything. The only thing that you can buy in the store are cosmetics. So if you like a skin for a certain hero, you can buy it, but you can literally play any hero for free. And I just wish that every MOBA did this because I hate it whenever I have to buy a character in a MOBA. Now, yes, you can get them by just playing the game. I know it, but you know, I just want it like this. You open up the game and you can literally just play any hero that you want. So if you click on this low complexity button over here, the game will filter out the easier heroes. Um, in general, I think this list is fine, but there are some heroes that are, in my opinion, not really characters you should play on your first match. Um, for example, Anti-Mage or Night Stalker. The rest of this list is actually pretty good um now personally the easiest heroes in my opinion are <laughs> uh phantom assassin if you want to play a carry she's really easy to play um then we also have draw ranger which is uh where's draw here she is um she's very easy to play as well for a support i would recommend shadow shaman or uh witch doctor those are very easy as well but if you want to play the easiest hero in the game and you want to play a carry then just pick this mother I really hate him. But if you are a new player and you just want to have fun and figure out how the game works, just pick Sniper. <laughs> He's so easy. All you gotta do is just right click. He is squishy, but he is very easy to play. So that's it for the heroes. Um, now I'll be going over a couple of tips and tricks that might be helpful for some of you. 
So let's say you've ordered pizza or something like that, and you gotta move away from the PC for like a moment. Um, well, what you can do then is just press F9 and the game will be paused. Now, other people can unpause the game, but if you have some nice people in the match, they will just wait till you are back, just press F9 again and it will unpause the game. Whenever you are going to buy an item, so for example, I want this Vanguard, you can click on it and you will see which parts you need to turn it into a Vanguard. So as you can see, I need a Ring of Health and a Vitality Booster. What you can do is you can shift click on it. And what this does is that these items that you still need will be shown in the right corner of your screen or maybe in the left corner of your screen. It depends on where your minimap is probably. But this way you can just right click on the item whenever you have enough gold and you don't have to worry about going to the store page anymore. It's a nice quality of life thing to have. So another thing that I want to show you guys has to do with forcing the tower to attack the creeps instead of me. So as you can see, it's focusing me right now. Um, all I have to do is press deny on my creep and it will attack my creeps instead of me. That way you can dive the tower and be very aggressive because it won't be focusing you but the creeps instead. Now another thing that I want to show you guys is something called creep pooling. Basically whenever you do this, um, it will make it so that your creeps will go into the jungle and start attacking these jungle creeps. Now whenever you do that, the enemy team will start pushing way further back into your lane. Which means that you will be able to sit behind your tower and just farm some gold. So if you are playing a support and you want to make it a little bit easier for your carry to farm, then just start creep pulling. Now in Dota, you don't have to go back to the base to collect your items. So for example, I'm going to buy this Ring of Protection. Um, whenever you press on Courier Deliver Items, your Courier will deliver the items to you, which is this flying horse thing, right? Um, this will probably be a different skin than what you have, but... Um, that's basically how it works. Now, whenever you reach a certain level, um, you will see that this button is going to be active as well. So when you click on it, um, it will get a burst of speed, which means that it will arrive way faster. Then you also have the courier shield. Whenever that becomes active, you click on it and it will basically shield your courier because enemies can kill your courier, which means that your items will be gone for a certain amount of time. So now it's time for the last and most important tip of all, how to mute someone. Now, especially toxic people can be very annoying. You can easily get rid of them by just muting them. So how do you mute them? All you have to do is go to these three stripes in the left corner of your screen. You click on it. And basically after that, you can just click on that red circle, which says mute player. Then you also have another red circle with a flag in it. So if you want to, for example, report them for griefing or, you know, their behavior is just um, out of this world. <laughs> you can do that as well. Well, guys, I think it's time to wrap up this video because uh, I feel like it's been a long one. I hope this guide was helpful for you guys. In the comment section on the last video, I saw that some people were saying that the audio was too low. Some people were saying that it was fine. So I hope that this video is loud enough. <laughs> now, remember, Dota 2 is all about practice, right? So don't get discouraged if things don't go perfectly at first. Just keep learning, keep playing. But the most important thing is to have fun, right? Now, I hope that this guide was helpful. And if it was, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Now also, if you have any questions or suggestions, just let me know as always in the comment section below. Now with all that said, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.